0.254. Imagine. Thank you so much for keeping us company. And if you just tuned in, this is Y254. We are now moving to our discussion. We are looking into the presidential speech where the cessation of movement of Nairobi, Mombasa, and Mandera was, uh, isn't. And now people are free to move. But what does that mean? Tell us as your views. I'm speaking to political analyst Cyrus Alitwa. Good evening, sir. Good evening to you. Now, um, the much awaited day came this day, and the president. Uh, announced what people were expecting, but I, uh, I would want to know what stood out for you in that particular speech. Uh, what stood out for me is uh, the thing of uh, economy. You see, economy drivers in this country mm -hmm. is pegged on various things. And if you look at, uh, if I, po I point to one thing, what we call transport sector. The transport sector is one of the biggest economic drivers in this country. Mm -hmm. And now opening the boundaries, okay, that Mandera, Mombasa, Nairobi, and Kilifi, it, we are now going to see people traveling, okay, from one region to another region. Why? Because one, this person maybe is in Nairobi and is supposed to be in Mashinani because of lack of employment that has been brought by the COVID-19. This person has been held in this region, mm -hmm. but because of, uh, due to lack of transport, he could not move back. Or somebody came for an interview, mm -hmm. but because of the lockdown, this person could not go back. Mm -hmm. So these have been the challenges that people have faced. And now it has opened up. Yes, he said he's going to observe. Uh, how it's going to, to how, how the, the trend is going to, to, to go. If it goes upwards, then. But the, my, 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 my confirmation is the trend will rise. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind, we went for a lockdown and a curfew mm -hmm. to flatten the curve. Okay. But we've not flattened the curve. We've increased the curve in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So now opening, you're going to have so much cases, mm -hmm. abnormal cases that are going to rise. Mm -hmm. As much as we are going to increase our economy, but we also need to look at our health. Mm -hmm. Now this one brings now the question of infrastructure, the health system. Mm -hmm. How do we need to improve our health system? Now that this uh, pandemic has come, mm -hmm. We need to live with it. Now, as we live by it, or we live with it, how are we going to improve our health system? Mm -hmm. That's now the question that we need to look into and interrogate ourselves and interrogate the system mm -hmm. in one or the other, mm -hmm. so that we get good responses and good management. Now, this goes back to the counties, okay? Because each and every county need to manage their health system. You see, it is partially devolved. It is not fully devolved. It is partially devolved. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a way the, the, the national government, okay, uh, uh, get, gets involved in the health matters mm -hmm. to account level. And there's a way a county needs to get involved in the health system. But the back stops at the county level. So How are we going to improve our health system in our country? So that at least Let's, let's also let our governors, let the ministries of health in the county try to give us a, 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 a free, a, a, a free medical, let me, let me say, let, let, let us tell us that this is a zero, a corona-free virus area, whereby we've not recorded any cases. And this, needs, this, this, this means that we need to ensure we have health workers in the hospitals, we need to have uh, facilities in the hospitals, both beds and the machines, in each and every county, so that to be able to curb this, we have community health workers. We need also to work with them in one way or the other. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. It also goes back to the education. You see, this one will tell us how we manage this one, will tell us on how we are going to open our schools, okay? Because if we don't manage this period, then it means even opening the schools, we don't need to rush, okay? 
And I say this based on the government directives and government reports on corona. Yeah, and actually that's a conversation that has been going on. But uh, a few things that came up this day, the president admitted that he, has, he had been... Uh, in a way, it was hard to make this decision. And frankly speaking, all the Kenyans have been working on a tight rope when it comes to economy, because everyone was struggling. And even even with the uh, the, the cessation of movement coming to an end uh, by tomorrow dawn, most of the matatus will be operating. People will be moving. But how are they, how are they going to regain themselves to the level they were? They have they were servicing loans. This uh, matatu industry they were servicing loans. We had these people who are working in these sectors, but they were not. Now who is moving? Do do we have that ma money to move around? Where are we beginning economically? Now where we are going to begin? There are those people, let me say they, were, they lost their jobs, then they sat somewhere, they said, once we, uh, we open, I'll go. So there's going to be that movement, first of all. Then there are just those people who have been in one or two things, doing one or two things here. So they have their own money, but they, they, they could not move to one region or there. And also business people. There are those people who could not move, okay? But... Because now we have, and I can term this as a suspension. It is not fully opened. Because he said he's going to look on how the cases will be managed. If they will increase abnormally, then it means we are going to be on a lockdown, full lockdown again. And this has happened in many countries. We've seen Madagascar has gone back to a lockdown. It had opened. Despite the fact them saying they had uh, an herbal medicine to cure corona, mm -hmm. I read just today somewhere they have gone back to a, a lockdown. But now the cases increased. So these things have happened in the world, the other, other parts of the world. So we expect, this is just a suspension, to monitor how the cases will be. If they increase, then we expect a lockdown until now we manage things. And that's why I started by saying this, the back stops by the health system in our own counties. How our own counties are going to manage this will determine whether we shall go back to a fully uh, operation or in going back to the lockdown. Okay? So we need to be more observant and we need also to interrogate ourselves right. on our health system. Because we need to go back, we need to normalize our, our, our lives. And I've, as I've always said, the, 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 this, this pandemic is there with us. We need to accept it and live with it. The only thing we need to do, we learn how to manage it. Okay? Like we have managed other conditions. Uh, yes, the way we manage other conditions. Uh, another thing that Kenyans have been anticipating so much was the reopening of uh, churches and uh, worship centers. And of course now the good news came. Yes. They have been allowed. But of course now the protocol is hard to implement, I must say, to some extent. Not everyone will be favored by the protocols. We have those churches that have a small space and they are many. They worship as far as outside the, yes. uh, the, the sanctuary they have made. What will happen if they're supposed to worship 100 persons for less than an hour? So will they have several services spread out during the Sunday, or what will happen? Now, you see, now this now brings in the point of uh, the churches being institutions that can govern themselves. Mm -hmm. But you see now, of late, we've seen the rampant opening of churches here and there. Mm -hmm. Okay? I can say, like political parties, <laughs> churches have become breakfast churches. Mm -hmm. Just someone opens a church today, He's, he gets ten, 10 people, 5 people. This is a congregation. Mm -hmm. So the, it is going to be hard, and we need regulations in place because we are talking about life of each and every, each and every Kenyan. Mm -hmm. So if we, we, we can't manage it. And my question has been, there has been a proposal that uh, we need to sanitize the church after attending the church service so that the other lot can come in and mm -hmm. attend the church service. Mm -hmm. But my question is, are we able to do it? Mm -hmm. And I come and answer myself and say no. Mm -hmm. Based on this fact, mm -hmm. we've had those uh, things on the stage that uh, they say you need to pass through like a, a cattle dip. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and be sanitized and, and, and be sanitized, okay? Mm -hmm. They have not worked. Where I come from, I I saw yesterday it is pulled out. It's not there. Okay? <laughs> so what does it mean? The ones that are in town they are, they are not operating. Mm -hmm. So this one means when we are not able even to manage the little, okay? The, the, the ones that we're managing in, in, in the society. Now mm -hmm. the church as another society mm -hmm. won't be able to manage. Mm -hmm. And now even the church is getting these sanitizers, it will be tricky. Mm -hmm. Because a sanitizer is not one shilling or ten shilling. Mm -hmm. Sanitizer is expensive, oh, yeah. one or the other. Mm -hmm. So a church acquiring a sanitizer mm -hmm. will be expensive. So we need serious... But, but, but the congregants will give their offerings and their tithes. We are not objecting, we are not objecting <laughs> how, many, how many churches are mm -hmm. going even to get the, those tithes from the congregation. Mm -hmm. We can mention very few churches. But if you go back to, 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 to where we come from, we have even those uh, churches in shanty places, okay? They cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. They won't afford it. And they never afford it, okay? So they live by the, let me say, masses, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, these are now where we need to sit down and look into how are we going to manage this, uh, such, a, such a churches, okay? Or such a institutions, mm -hmm. because this is now a serious case. Should, should we, should we uh, come up, uh, maybe a bill should be passed in Parliament of regulating the churches that are up, uh, coming up every other day? I remember a bill was tried, uh, the Attorney General mm -hmm. tried came up, come up with regulations over the churches. But we see now the, 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 the pastors and other people went and said we are doing bad. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now wh what we need to do is to have, let me say, an executive order. Mm -hmm. This happened in Rwanda mm -hmm. and I can, I can assure you the President decided to take it, uh, to take it upon himself mm -hmm. to ensure that no mushrooming of churches in yeah. There has to be regulations. If that on, happens in Kenya, you know on, what on to churches. <laughs> But it, it, it has to, it has to. We see, at times, mm -hmm. if we take, uh, if we take uh, serious measures, if we want to ensure that things are well complied to, then we need, at times, to be, we need to have dictatorship mm -hmm. in one area so that these things are well managed. Mm -hmm. Or else, it won't be managed. Okay. Or let me. What you can say, a tax should be introduced. To okay. To churches. To churches. churches. The churches that we worship. Because they will cry. I have no, a congregation no, no. of fifty. Pastors. Let me tell you. A even 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 in the U.S., mm -hmm. churches pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Churches pay taxes. So we need to introduce the same in this country. Mm -hmm. In these other countries, the, the, even countries in the, in the Europe. Mm -hmm. Churches pay taxes. There's nothing wrong in that. Okay, we, we have uh, like three minutes. Let's finish with this. Uh, one of uh, another problem that ha uh, people have been wondering, uh, the conversation has been going on. And actually, I talked about it in, in the morning, and now the uh, CS for Education, Professor George Magua, has been given, say, less than 24 hours to tell Kenyans what he thinks about the reopening of schools. There has been a question on testing of all the teachers and if the teachers will be tested. Will the students be tested? How will, how, what uh, strategies do they have? What do you think uh, C.S. Magua will be telling us briefly as we wind up? Uh, you see, Magua has been an escapist on uh, all this thing of uh, school reopening. I can speak that frankly without any contradiction because I've been really observing him on school opening, but he has been very escapist. So what you only need to do as I, we, we talked earlier on on these things of school opening, mm -hmm. we have no measures in schools for school reopening. We have no facilities. Mm -hmm. Even those test kits, we don't have, True. okay? We don't have the personnel. Mm -hmm. We need to have other managers who will ensure mm -hmm. the schools are well uh, 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 managed with regards to COVID. We need to have public health officers in schools mm -hmm. to ensure the, the rules are complied to. Mm -hmm. The health regulations are well adhered to. Mm -hmm. But you see, we don't have that capability. Even money is to pay this personnel. Mm -hmm. We won't have it. Mm -hmm. But I assure you, money is to run other, other interests <laughs> no. will be there. They will be yes. uh, welcome to Kenya. This is our country and yes. we love it the way it is. <laughs> so the curfew continues. Mm. You have to rush home. 
and the coffee continues. <laughs> uh, why, well, actually, why, why didn't the lapse of curfew never happen? Uh, and it will never happen very soon. It will, it, it will continue the way it is. Why? You see, uh, social places like the uh, bars, and bars and clubs and, clubs and, and any other night joint. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of regulating it. But we have so much money generated from those places. Yes, every single the, night. The, there's a lot of money generated from it, but what are we going to do? There's nothing we're going to do. It's, it's a, a matter of regulation. It's a club who, who, guy. who told you that people are not drinking? Who told you people, they, are, not, they, people they, are not Who told they, you people are not socializing? They are and they, they are. have found them, yes. themselves a new joint in the Shambaza. Yes. I, I have seen uh, some pictures trending online where they are celebrating. But anyway, that marks the end of our <laughs> conversation this evening. Thank you so much, uh, Cyrus, for coming and giving us your opinion Thank in you regards too. to the uh, uh, presidential address to the nation regarding COVID-19. The coffee continues for another 30 days. The cessation of movement in and out of Nairobi will lapse this um, uh, morning. Uh, uh, tomorrow you'll be free to move. Time for me to leave. I'll be leaving you in the safe hands of Ken Relibis and DJ Teska and Kalundu Onwai and Mashariki. Stay tuned, be entertained. I'll be seeing you again tomorrow. My name is Adara Vahilawi. Good night.